If you want to start making money in the music industry, one of the best ways to do it is helping artists get their music heard. So in this video, I'm going to break down how you can get your first client, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on with a simple system to get yourself started. Hey, if you don't know who I am, my name's Brandman Sean, and my music marketing agency gets hired by indie artists and major labels to help get the artist's music heard. At this point, we've helped over 100 artists grow their fan base and get millions of streams, just to let you know who this information is coming from. So let's get into it, how you get your first client. All right, so what we're gonna go over here is a very simple system that's been great for converting clients again and again and again called the two call close, and it's perfect for beginners. So the first thing you're gonna do is call number one, right? The second phase is actually a proposal phase, and then the last thing you're gonna do is the second call. But there's certain things you have to make sure happens in each particular phase, all right? So what happens on call number one? On call number one, you need to speak to these people, right? When it comes to running a campaign, people prefer to actually speak to a real person, right? There's all those sites that you might see selling all types of services and you never talk to anybody. A lot of those are scam and spam sites and a lot of people have gotten accustomed to it. Even if you are offering something legitimate, the marketplace has now been scorned. You have scarred artists working through the scam and the scam and the scam that they've had in their history and now they're hoping to find somebody they can trust and it's hard to get them to trust you when you don't have much of a brand presence going on on the front end without a conversation. So this call is extremely important not only to make that personal connection and show that you're something different than what else is out there but also just help them understand who you are, your philosophy and some other things that'll become really important when you see how this entire process goes. Goals, all right so when you get on the call you want to start by asking them basic information get to know their background let them know that this is about them and their particular scenario their unique background and what their goals are now are important to you right it's not just a plug and play where none of that stuff matters right people want to know they're dealing with somebody who can think beyond a regular promotion there's music promoters and then there's music marketers who have more strategy and more of a mind that you're buying into right and this is what you're trying to establish on this call so once you start to get an understanding of their background asking them those types of questions you also want to accomplish a level of authority on this call. Many of you, they might not know who you are. You might not have a big brand presence. You might not have a lot of case studies. So you want to show them how you think, right? And establish that value and authority because this is what's going to help them build trust in you as an individual. You're literally brand building as you go. So don't be afraid to give a little advice. Some people get a afraid like, hey, if I give them advice, they're going to like go off and just do whatever I told them to do for themselves and never come back. Number one, those people you don't want to be your client anyway. We'll get into that in another video, but the right people will now say, ah, I can trust this person to run my campaign. So you want to establish authority. And there's two primary ways that you can do this as a marketer. Number one, what do you know? And number two, what have you done, right? Those simple things. If you haven't done a lot, you don't have a lot of case studies, then you have to lean on what do you know, all right? So when we talk about what do you know, let's just say somebody's trying to run an advertising campaign. They're running an advertising campaign and what do you know about advertising? You know that testing, you should know, right? That testing is very, very important when it comes to ads. You don't just throw a lot of money and then scale out a whole campaign for $500 or $5,000 out the gate. You have to run through a testing phase. So let them know, hey, we're gonna run through a testing phase, right? And after we get the best information possible and understand which ad works best or which audience works best, we're then going to make sure we maximize the results of the best possible scenario, right? Whatever that looks like for them, the best ad, right? The best audience, that's what you're gonna scale out with the rest of the budget. So you increase whatever the goal is, right? So I can't tell you what you're gonna increase because 
they have not told you and you have to ask that question which leads me to number three right you want their background but you want their goal as well and this is how you can begin to not only establish authority but then make sure that you're establishing authority through knowledge that's relevant to the goal that they have in mind and you can give them a general overview of what that might look like, all right? And again, this is what it might look like because you also have to say, well, at the end of the day, we need to see the song or actually see how the audience is responding because you might've heard the song already. We need to see how the audience is responding. Now, if you've already done some things, then you wanna pull on case studies that have actually reflected that, right? Even if it wasn't a general client, but you were helping a friend and you ran some ads for him. And we're just using ads for an example of one thing, you wanna be able to walk through, hey, we ran an ad, it started with this type of result and grew to that, whatever that looked like, all right? But those are the three main things you wanna do on call number one, you want to have an idea of their background so you see where they are in their journey, have an idea of their goal, and then last, you want to make sure you're establishing some level of authority so they have trust in you. After you go over those main three things, then you speak on potential services that can help them get towards that goal that you can provide, right? Now, it depends on where you are, in your marketing career are you willing to just do anything are there's a specific type of campaign that you're willing to do you make that decision really going in right that's the best thing that you can do for yourself so you don't have to think about it during the call are you willing to do whatever it takes influencers playlisting ads whatever just so you can get experience having a client and then learn as you go on that uh whatever service you're providing or do you want to provide a specific service and say, hey, I'm just running ads and I'm going to present an ad strategy as a solution to whatever they want to get accomplished, right? That's something that's up to you. All of these things are a possibility, right? After you speak about your services and how it can help them get towards their specific goal, now you have to ask a simple question. Does this sound like it makes sense to you? And if so, what's your start date? And if it does sound like it makes sense to them, they'll give you that information. Yes, it does. And we're actually gonna be starting next week. Can you start next week? Or it's not gonna be starting till about a month from now, whatever that is, right? Now, if it doesn't make sense, a lot of times it might be pricing, right? So, or they might ask you what the price is at that point. You need to have your price going in, straightforward. Have your price going in, again, have it going in. Why am I repeating this? Because some people get greedy, right? Somebody says they have a big budget and then all of a sudden you wanna up your prices, right? But that big budget might not be completely allocated towards services specifically, right? Or somebody doesn't seem like they have money and then you severely drop your prices and now you come out feeling uncomfortable or, 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 or mad that you even took a campaign later on because you're doing all this work and you're not getting your money's worth what you feel, right? So to keep it simple, just don't play yourself. Make an, a simple decision. Is it worth your time to do it for X amount of dollars? Do it for that amount and be willing to negotiate if you feel like there's still other value in doing a campaign like, hey, I want this as a case study. I want to get some testing of my skill set so I can continue to use this for more clients and more clients and build my confidence, right? Know your number, right? Say that straightforward. Don't change it. And then work from there, whatever negotiation makes sense, all right? Once y'all get there, the next phase is the proposal phase. So if they say, hey, this does sound like it makes sense for me so far, um, this is gonna be my start date, you'll let them know, hey, if, if it does, I'm going to go ahead and draw up like a, a strategy for you and I'll put it on paper and send it over to you and we'll actually schedule another call just to see what you think, answer any questions that you have on it, all right? So the key is you wanna go ahead and schedule the second call before you get off. All right, schedule that second call before you get off. Give yourself three days minimum, like so they can understand and feel like, hey, I'm actually building out some kind of campaign. I'm actually doing work. I'm not gonna say, let's do it tomorrow and try to do all this overnight. I have a job to do. I'm gonna truly try to customize it, see what your needs are and build something out, all right? So you schedule that second day. 
all right? In that in-between phase, you send them over a proposal. Remember, hey, this is a proposal, but we're going to give you an opportunity to talk about it on another call. You're sending a proposal, but you're still gonna have a second conversation. So yes, you want it to have a decent amount of details, but it doesn't have to have every little detail there. You're gonna create clarity on the second call. What you wanna do, all right, is have that second call because that second call is when you're supposed to be closing and getting that money, all right? So what does that look like? You send an email, hey, here are the things that I propose for your campaign based on the things that we talked about on the call. Let me know if you have any questions. Of course, I'm gonna answer anything that you have on the second call, but if you have any questions in between that, I'll be happy to answer them or at least take those in mind to prepare for our second call. All right, bam, proposal sent. Now it's time for the second call. On that second call, you spend that time answering questions, right? This part of the call should be pretty simple. You should be prepared. And the biggest thing that will have you prepared is truly having a vision for their project, right? Whatever that project is, it could be a single, whatever you're working on, right? If you have a vision for that, a vision and an opinion, that's where they see the value in you as a marketer. Y'all could disagree. You wanna see if you're off base based on what they think. They might be uncomfortable with you going about it in a certain way and then give you their opinion. Here is where you say, hey, here's my strong recommendations based on what I see. If you do disagree, however, I can do that too. You don't wanna to spend too much time trying to convince them of something that they don't want or don't quite see for themselves just yet. Go ahead and do the plan that they would like if they really feel strongly about it. But the fact that you present it, an opinion is extremely valuable, right? And that's a note, right? A footnote in history for further along in your relationship if things go wrong, right? It's a footnote in history that you did offer an alternative perspective. So if things went wrong, hey, maybe they'll try your way next time around. Or at the very least, you're someone that they can go to for opinions in the future, right? So answer those questions, come to a conclusion of what the strategy will be live on that call, all right? And once you do that, then it's time to close. So the best thing right, that you can do is close them on the call, right? Have an invoice ready or create it on the call. But oftentimes people aren't ready for that, right? So the second option is just sending the, the invoice along with the proposal as a follow-up. You send that as a follow-up, have that invoice, and then you got a client, right? When they pay, you have a client. But those three phases, right? Call number one, proposal, and call number two are important to repeat again and again to get clients at the beginning. There's ways to close faster and there's longer types of closes for different types of clients, but that's going to be the one that applies to most artists that you will encounter and even most labels that you encounter when you're just starting off. So hopefully you go ahead and use those tips to not only get your first clients, but get some money. And if you want to continue to learn how to be a music marketer, how to make money and turn it into a legitimate line of business for yourself, no problem because I created other videos on this channel breaking down step by step how I created one of the most respected indie music marketing agencies in the industry and how I made a lot of money doing it. All right, so I'll make sure the team puts one of our best videos to help future music marketers up at the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.